What's up boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, whatever, whoever you are watching this uh, crazy video. Uh, this is Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com here and this is volume 33 of the Untold Truth in Detailing. So, I have a group on Facebook called Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. If you want to be a part of that, awesome, send us a request. If you're going to bring drama to the group, don't bother because we'll get you out just as fast as we got you in there. So, where I'm at today is one of the people in my group asked a question, a totally, utterly legitimate question that I get asked pretty regularly, but instead of typing that to the group, I wanted to shoot a video about it. I just was compelled to express my feeling about this situation uh, in a video. And so I think I'm going to start doing that. Um, this The Untold Truth and Detailing series has been hot. It has been definitely a hit with um, everybody uh, who watches it, uh, who is in need of some guidance in you know their their business endeavors uh you'll notice that uh the untold truth in detailing is more about business content and how to run a detailing business than it is about actual uh doing the work which is what some of the other videos outside of this series are about but the cool part about this situation is i can help so this guy asked how do you go about dealing with last minute cancellations. I'm pretty sure was exactly what he asked. Um, we will uh, confirm that. I will I will go ahead and I will read the question. Uh, but the question is, I'm looking for some insight on how others handle people who cancel last minute on an appointment. I'm having a hard time keeping my calm because the time is blocked from other potential clients that I have to schedule out or they decide to go some to someone else. So, a couple different things. First of all, I generally will overbook. And I know that sounds crazy, but when I get a whole lot of calls, I'll put them in there where they need to be and um, I will space them out where I could get to them if, if they all stay in or at some point, I would just, if it's at the end of the day, you call and see if you can reschedule for the last job. But realistically, how I've always done it is, I would put one more job in there than I could do in a day. Typically, if there was that much work coming in at that particular time. I know this sounds crazy, but I can tell you that in my experience, people do not mind if you are late or if you need to reschedule. If you're honest about it and you communicate about it. Not showing up is absolutely out of the question. Uh, and BSing them somehow, also out of the question. You be honest, you be respectable, and you will get respect. And that's kind of the first thing that I would do is overbook a little bit. Uh, so that if I were in a situation where somebody just dropped off, it didn't matter that much because at that point, then you've got a little bit more time to deal with your day. Um, the other thing is, you know, you want to schedule your appointments close together. So if you're going across town to do one, you need to make your way back across town hitting those jobs. So you want to just keep, keep that in mind. But specifically, uh, the first reason I would go about or the, the first way I would go about uh, remedying people that drop off last minute would be just to overbook a little bit uh, and then communicate uh, to your clients, uh, hey, I'm going to be a little late, I'm going to be a little bit early. Uh, and then, you know, if you know midday that your day is never going to get completed because nobody has canceled on you, maybe call and ask the last customer if maybe you can move them to the next day or you know again you know what's going on with these customers when they when they call you um, you know what they've got going on based on the conversation you have on when they want to schedule you in and again communication is key to this situation especially when you overbook a little bit um, because people want to know that 
you respect their time and that's the same thing so if somebody calls and cancels on you last minute they're not respecting your time so the only thing you can really do about that situation is just move right along just chalk it off as a loss and move right along but as far as losing uh, money or losing uh, the potential for another client, I just would generally overbook a little bit. I always did that, never had an issue with it because I communicate well. Um, the other thing is, and really it's the most important factor here is when a customer calls you to talk to you about your services, uh, talk to you about your pricing, and potentially schedule a, uh, a detail, I thought, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm weird. I don't know. But I, I always can tell if a person's going to flake out on me. I always can tell. It's, there's been very few times where I couldn't gather from the telephone conversation either about the services pr provided or the money, uh, you know, the cost for them to get in on a, a package, uh, you know, or, you know, in general, how much something's going to cost you can feel them out you can again i've talked about qualifying the customer and you know you really got to do that on your initial your initial conversation before the consultation so the consultation would be uh when the customer comes uh for the job uh and you know they go to their appointment or you go to them for their appointment the consultation is going to be you walking around the car and making sure what you've talked to them about on the phone is what they actually need and then you know obviously you suggestive sell um you know you point out any issues that there are in the car so that there's no confusion later later on in the customer's eyes oh i didn't see that whatever um so that that's important that consultation but what what is equally important as the cover your ass consultation or the potential upsell situation in that consultation is that phone call that you receive initially and i would say that it's so important to qualify that customer at that time because you most likely are, if, if you're in a position where they've flaked out on, on you last minute or didn't call to reschedule or whatever, you missed some kind of red flag. I mean, I, I always am awesome about paying attention to what people are telling me and how they are expressing themselves to me. Uh, if they aren't that interested, when you tell them the price, you can hear it in their voice. You've just gotta listen for these key things, these red flags that might put you off a little bit. And if, especially if they set up an appointment with you or you set them up an appointment and they sounded a little bit flaky and you weren't sure about it and you put them in at 12 o'clock on Tuesday and you've got a eight o'clock on Tuesday and a 9.30 on Tuesday and then you'll have that 12 o'clock on Tuesday, I would schedule something for one o'clock just keep it close to that time. Uh, keep that time tight. That way you're not piddle dicking around waiting on something to do. You can go into that next job or even call them and say you'll be there early and still get in maybe your next job if you have one. Or you know maybe you can get to that one o'clock job uh, and potentially upsell them to a bigger job. So at that point, you're really not losing anything. You can upsell them if, you know, if they need it, you upsell them to something that would compensate for that lost job. Uh, you know, compensation, you know, is, is important. Um, try to manipulate your time and your jobs where if you lose a job, you can compensate with the next job by adding in what that would have cost. You know, sell that to the customer. It's all about how you communicate to the customer. Um, you know, again, if the next job, so if that one o'clock job doesn't need whatever that job that, that canceled on you was going to cost, then obviously you don't want to sell it to them. But if the car's all swirled up, try to sell them a polishing package. So compensation for your lost time per selling the next job more services uh, is one way to fight that. But beyond that, um, looking for what red flags in the, uh, the phone uh, conversation, the initial deal, you can read these people, I'm telling you. Some people just sound flaky and you know that they're flaky, but you don't, you don't 
put that together when you're on the phone. So pay more attention to your phone calls. Um, and the other thing is overbook a little bit. So overbooking and that compensation thing go hand in hand. So, you know, it's a science trying to figure all this stuff out, I know, but from my experience, overbooking and compensation is really the best way to fight it. But realistically, in that first conversation you have with that customer, nine times out of 10, you know whether they're gonna flake on you or not. But beyond that, you should also check with them. So if you schedule a week out, you need to check with that customer a day, two days, three days, even you know a week before if it's two weeks out. You know, just keep on you know, contacting the customer and making sure that you're still on. Uh, that way you'll, you'll know maybe they forget. Maybe, maybe it's legit where they have to cancel at the last minute because they forgot about it until the last minute uh, and something else came up. So it's your, you do your own due diligence to check with that customer and make sure that your scheduling is in place uh, prior to that time coming. So I hope all those things help you guys. Uh, I, I'm telling you, if you follow those rules, uh, qualify that customer in the initial conversation, overbook a little bit and compensate for the loss of what that day's wage would have been. Uh, and you know, you're going to be just fine. I mean, it, it's, it's important. Uh, these are cool things, uh, to pay attention to and things that will really change your business if you allow it. Uh, if you guys got any questions, 813-846-4406, uh, and uh, pay attention to the things I say, guys. I, I give you all this information per my experience in the real world uh, for the last 16 years. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Have a great day.